So what is VP going to pick first in their draft against the Lions? Oh, I wonder what here it's going to be. Oh, Abaddon. No way. Only the most broken offlaner of this patch. Well, let's figure out why. The offlane is no place for the weak. And this is why at GameLeap.com, we have hundreds of pro guides covering the most powerful offlane heroes so you can start carrying your games from Dota's most notoriously tough lane. To master the tricks of the pros, check out the discount link in the description of this video and start dominating your games from the offlane role immediately. So we're going to be looking at Resolution. He's currently the offlaner for VP, very talented player, and talking about why, you know, it's really simple. Abaddon is broken. So to put it simple, you have a lot of options within the laning stage. You'll notice in this game, he actually takes his Q first and allows him to secure first blood. You have to understand, like, I know a lot of you guys have been seeing Abaddon lately. The hero's broken. And you're thinking, why doesn't he take Curse of Avernus? That's the broken spell, right? Actually, Miss Quail is also extremely good. It's a 4.5 second, 50 mana, 120 damage nuke. It does a ton of damage, and, and th that just segues into the point why this hero is so good. What hero can take three different spells at level one and justify all of them reliably? Like, like no problem. You could justify any of these spells. And also, if you even just think about the combo they potentially have going into this lane, they can make Illusions of the Abaddon, which works with this Curse of Avernus, uh, meaning that they can easily silence their opponents. I mean, it, it's potentially very crazy what they can do in this lane. So just to get into the landing stage for Abaddon, I want to mention a key couple things. First off, your hero has 60 damage, at level 1, you are very easy to last hit with, which I think is really a great reason to pick up this hero. A lot of people struggle with last hitting in the landing stage, so make sure you're getting to that 50 by 10 at minimum. Also, you have 328 base movement speed at level 1. That is one of the highest movement speeds in the game. Considering that your hero relies on getting right clicks off, it's as if Slark or Faceless Void had this high movement speed. Like... That's what your hero is. And so yeah, I think these are a couple of the main reasons why I would recommend this hero to just basically anyone. It has such a good ability to just do anything you need it to do in the game. It can carry, it can chill, in the laning stage, in mid game, it can do this. Whatever it wants, it can do all of them. And you're gonna notice this is actually what he focuses on very early on into the laning stage. A lot of people get caught up with Abaddon in just running around and running people down. They're like, I got a shield and I got Curse of the Avernus. I'm going in. But like, realistically, you actually don't have to do that. You can just relax and get CS in the early level. You hit a spike much later on, um, especially if you hit level 4 and you have a point in Miscoil, two points in your Fodder Shield, and a point in Cursey Divernus, you're one of the strongest heroes in Dota. And so that's what I want to point out in this lane. I think he believed that the curse wasn't necessarily the best option against Gyrocopter, right? It's also a hero with generally high movement speed, 319 at this current point so he's going to opt for this more defensive build where they can go on him right they have two stuns so they can actually pressure the abaddon pretty well in this lane so he makes this really good option to you know if he is going to get pressured have the ability to deal with some of the stuns with the Fada shield potentially especially if they go on a support more importantly deny himself with miss coil if the time came right it's a great way to actually destroy your laning stage Okay, next off, this play right here summarizes everything I want to teach to every Dota player in the world. Do not overcommit for kills. Look right here. I want you guys to answer a question for me. How many of you, put your hand up, how many of you would have dove this kill? How many? I think the answer is 99%. Why? Well, because it looks like a free kill. However, why do they need to kill him? It actually doesn't do anything. It actually doesn't really add anything to their lane. In fact, the only thing it would really do is give Ogre Magi full mana and the ability to go back to base and bring gyro items. It actually could be considered a bad thing to kill him there. So I just want to point that out just because I think that's an offlaner tip that could help a lot of you. In terms of starting items, I really like what he buys here. I think it's very important for offlaners to get into the habit of this. He rushes a Quelling Blade, Magic Stick, and Boots. And then he even is rushing a Bassy afterwards. And these are the best four items for the landing stage. Now you could argue, you know, there's better items than Bassy. But for Abaddon, it's great because it allows you to have a creep advantage, some extra damage, and more mana for spamming your spells. All right, coming up here, um, I'm just going to begin to show the OG strengths of Abaddon. And another reason, I, I know I'm stressing item build a lot here, guys, but it's such a big part of Dota that people just ignore. You have to understand his small items here enable him so hard. He has 10 sticks, meaning he can spam spells and dive the tower reliably here as well as an orb of venom to slow down this gyrocopter and later on secure the kill right and that's what's important also this this clip is legitimately hilarious if you haven't seen it nico baby tried to <laughs> he tried to drop his wraith ban and pop the wand for extra stats but uh fortunately he didn't actually drop the item in time and he died and resolution got his wraith ban
which is really bad. So yeah, if you're playing Abaddon and you haven't picked up the enemy carries item yet, you were doing something really bad. In fact, you probably should stop playing Dota. But really moving on to the main point, um, I, th I think you have to understand that this hero doesn't necessarily have to crush the landing stage to have impact. And that's really the main thing I wanted to say. The only thing you have to really, really, really worry yourself about on Abaddon is getting levels and good CS. Because once you hit this point where you have, you know, a lot of small items like the Phase Boots, Orb of Venom, Bracer, Wand, Bassy, that's when you're actually at your strongest in the game right because you're incredibly difficult to kill and you can run at anyone in the game but what i will say is if you're landing against melee heroes make sure you take the curse of avernus very early because it is extremely important in pressuring them right the gyrocopter makes it a bit hard once again because he's ranged and they have two stuns meaning that it's very hard for him to close the gap so i think it's very logical um you know for him not to necessarily take and go as aggressive as you might expect to see from an abaddon i want to ask another important question here what should you do on Abaddon coming out of the landing stage? I think we can all agree he has 58 CS, 1 kill, and 3 assists. We can all agree he had a good landing stage, especially after stealing the Wraith Pan. So what do you do when you have a good landing stage on Abaddon? I think a lot of people would assume the answer is, well, I, I'm a saving hero. I have two saves. I should go and, you know, TP to the other core's lanes and protect them. I would often argue that the better play and the more reliable play that you should be making in your pubs is to stay in lane, and focus on taking the tower, right? Your, your passive works on towers, meaning that you actually take towers very quickly. And most importantly, you're very good at diving towers. As you'll see here, with the spamming of his aphotic shield, he's able to dive the tower and kill the Lina. So it's very important that you're spamming aphotic shield and, you know, getting your ulti as well as these movement speed based items. But most importantly, he takes the tower now afterwards, right? His team doesn't necessarily need him in the side lanes, which even incentivizes this play even more. I just want to make it clear that you do not have to roam and, and protect your teammates as Abaddon to have impact. You can do that job later on, especially when you have a lot of levels, because Abaddon thrives, and I mean thrives with levels. You don't just want a few, you want a ton. Next up here, I just want to show a very high skill sequence. So he takes the bottom tier one tower. Very great, right? Just like I was saying. Then he immediately TPs to the shrine, heals all the way up, and with his small items, very important, with his small items, and with the backup of his team, they're able to go and secure the mid tower. This is a super high MMR play that is almost never reciprocated in any games. So if you're playing with your friends or with your team, I highly recommend you actually try to get them to do this. Your hero naturally is extremely good at frontlining for the mid tier 1 tower, right? It simply makes a lot of sense. You can shield, you can Q, you can curse the tower, you can ulti when needed. It's fantastic. And not only that, he also has his Vlads. It's legitimately the perfect timing. And I think that's a big separation between, you know, even a low immortal or a high divine player from, you know, a pro like resolution. They don't actually end up getting the tier 1 tower mid, but they force a lot of rotations which created a ton of space for the PL. You have to understand, plays like that are the effective plays in Dota. A lot of the time what I see from players is that they're running around, they're chasing kills, they're like, I'm ahead, let's go, let's kill them all, and what ends up happening is that they just run around, they get zero last hits, and, and no tower pressure. Do you see how you can drag the enemy team around the map and actually shut down their farm without killing them by, you know, pushing like a mid tier one and not over committing to it? That, my friends, is a very good way to look at Dota and hopefully you can kind of consider it. Because now you'll notice also after he's done pushing the mid tier one, you know, it's not a dead tower, but he feels like it's no longer an option. What he's doing is pushing out top wave, right? This is potentially hard farm because the enemy team most likely has a war here, right? They can gank him very easily with the smoke. But why is he doing this? Because your hero is very good at this. Abaddon is unbelievably difficult to gank. It's very upsetting to gank Abaddon. It feels like a waste of time nine times out of 10, right? So you take the hard farm and you scale. That's it. It's like, okay, if my team doesn't want to fight right now because we have a PL who's just trying to scale, that's fine. I'm just going to take the hard farm, but this is what's important. If you are running around on the other side of the map, running around and taking all the safe farm, you're griefing your carry. So make sure you're taking the most dangerous farm on the map, whichever side it is, wherever you think the enemy heroes can threaten the most. And next up, he addresses one of the most important and frequently asked questions I get, which is what do I do speed when my team is fighting or wants to fight all the time and I want to farm? Do you understand how little time he spent in pushing in waves? No jungling. He pushed in two maybe three waves that's it and then he instantly tps back mid i am not saying for all you support and offlane players you have to afk farm to have impact that is not what i'm saying but you should definitely should be pushing in one to two creep waves especially if it's hard farm it's one of the best ways to scale and then he instantly goes back to fighting and taking over an enemy tower and this is what i like to call clean gameplay if you can reciprocate anything close to this you will have more success in your games because i think players are trying to do way too much and it's griefing themselves 
Next up here, I just want to point out a couple things about Abaddon. It's very important to use your shield when farming. Uh, also, if you cast a Fada shield when you already have an Fada shield on, it will pop the previous one, which is very convenient for farming a lot of these camps. Make sure you're doing that. It's it's super, super convenient because I see players just like standing by the cam, tanking it and, and waiting for the shield to pop. This uh, That's a big efficiency play to you know amp your farm. Now, upcoming here is the main reason why I'm suggesting Abaddon in this current meta and to anyone who's just interested in learning the offlane or trying to gain MMR. The execution of this hero is brutally simple. The main thing you have to do in fights is walk in and auto attack people. And then when your teammates get gone on you shield them it's very important to shield them and not yourself all the time right you will stay alive due to your burrow time shield your teammates and that's exactly what he does he tries to keep shadow demon alive doesn't work out but it's still the right play and then instead of shielding himself once again he shields the death prophet which in turn is, is going to allow her to stay alive for longer only at the end now when he's super low hp and just kind of wants to chill in the fight is he going to actually you know shield himself but other than that you really really want to avoid it and yeah, the last thing to look at in this fight is make sure you're paying attention to any heroes that have stuns, right? He's going to be in this game looking at, okay, the missile, nets, light strike array, ogre stun, void. And if he sees any of these things committed on his teammates, he's going to be incentivized to actually purge them, right? And that's exactly what he sees here. The Lena turns around, goes for the stun on no one. He stays out of range, instantly purges her, well, almost instantly purges her, and picks up the kill, right? That's a big deal, paying attention to animations and understanding who actually threatens your team and what you can purge. And finally, before I move on to a late game fight, I just want to mention the last thing that is brutally important with Abaddon. You are the best defender or one of the best defenders of towers in Dota. No one wants to commit on Abaddon. It's like committing on a Tidehunter or a Techies in the Trees. You just don't do it. So, that's exactly what he does here. Now, they actually end up getting the tower, right? They commit to it. You can't necessarily just push people off, but especially if it's in the early game, you're great at defending towers, and it also means you'll be in a lane, which means you're farming. So, in general, yeah, defend towers. I think it's super beneficial for your hero. Alright, now let's briefly look at a mid-game fight. I really like how he plays the beginning of this, because in particular, you notice he could actually commit on this Meepo, but why doesn't he? Well, first off, when he's going on Meepo, he's actually looking at his minimap, guys. In the fights, you should look at your minimap. He's definitely not paying attention to the Meepo, as crazy as that sounds. He's paying attention to the enemy team, because before they even go on his map, right, or on his screen, he's backing up. He's staying with his team, and this is important. You don't always want to overextend on Abaddon because you'd rather be in position to actually save your teammates, right? And that's what he does here, right? He, he's just kind of staying back and not overextending, which, you know, prevents his ulti from being popped too early. You don't want to get your ulti popped unnecessarily, you know, unless you're scouting for vision or, or they're, you're roaching or something like that. Now, funny enough about this game as we, as we head into a late game fight, or I, I guess I should say mid game, is that VP lost a Rax top and ends up winning this game in 30. And I want to show why that happens with Abaddon, right? Why is that even possible? In the beginning, it starts with this brilliant fight where he's so attentive to his teammates, right? His Shadow even gets jumped and instead of being the typical Abaddon who just runs at the backliners because he thinks, you know, I have to apply this curse, he instead stays on the back line and protects his shadow demon that's huge because the shadow demon is a lot of damage for this meepo right and that's the main threat right now this 33 meepo is going to shred them if they don't deal with him right so he saves his his shadow demon which allows the shadow demon to get off his w and later allows them to kill the meepo right it, it, it really comes down to that guys do not ignore your backliners in fact your backliners are often more important than your frontliners who are a lot more tanky and then you notice with the power of the Abaddon and the Curse of Avernus on the tower, you absolutely shred towers because your entire team gets a hundred attack speed. A hundred attack speed on the tower. One hundred. What? <laughs> I like, I'm not kidding. I don't know how to say it. Like, your team legitimately insta kills towers when you get curse on them, including your supports. It's that strong. And yeah, now that they get a single pick off with this amazing build that he has, they can take Roche. And I think this is why his items are perfect and why I think people are looking at Abaddon wrong. Abaddon is really great at saving teammates, right? That's the main benefit of your heroes. So you build items to do that, right? Vlad's is going to buff up his carries. Pipe allows him to stay alive, keep his ultimate, you know, from being popped too early as well as saving his teammates. And then Curse allows you to, you know, take Roche on it. It's really great. Your hero has so much utility and allows for good team fighting and objective based gaming and i think that's why you know you can be so effective on abaddon when your team's just trying to take roche and it's really slow or take towers if you have an abaddon 
all that kind of changes. And you notice here in this fight, as they blow up the Night Stalker, he really can just do whatever he wants if he really wanted. But instead, what he does is keep his supports alive. You notice this is a common trend, keeping your supports alive. He has a Death Prophet and a PL. Two heroes that, you know, are very difficult for the enemy team to kill. Could he save them? Yes, if they're in threat, right? Or they get stunned by Lina and they're trying to get blown up. He should save them. But often, the most important one are these backline supports who provide a ton of control against the enemy team if they're kept alive from the initial jump. But then once again here, you notice that the fight continues to develop, and he's not just only tunnel visioning on his support. I want to make that clear, right? His peel goes in here, is jumping the backline, and as I said, he's paying attention to the stun animations. Gets stunned by the Ogre Magi, right? In a pretty bad spot. And so he's paying attention to him. He's like, okay, my teammate's stunned, insta purge, allows the peel to get his BKB off, and the fight is done. And this is when the game ends. Literally, the enemy team calls it. They die back. Because they know if the Abaddon and plus his PL and DP get into their base, the towers fall. Curse of the Avernus ends the game. And that is the strength of Abaddon. I think the hero's execution is brutally simple. I think a lot of players should be picking this hero if you're not already. And hopefully you see why. Get the last hits in your lane. Build small items. Push and defend towers. Take the hard farm. And in fights, don't overextend. And I think you're going to have a really good time on this hero. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. The offlane is no place for the weak. And this is why at GameLeap.com, we have hundreds of pro guides covering the most powerful offlane heroes so you can start carrying your games from Dota's most notoriously tough lane. To master the tricks of the pros, click on this link right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount and unlock your unfair advantage.